Hello, anatomy students. In this podcast, I'm going to go over the anatomy of the skin and some of its main accessory structures using one of our lab models. Keep in mind, this model does not indicate all of the structures of the skin, but it highlights most of the main components. This region of the model represents the hairless skin on the sole of the foot. And it's this section that we'll take a look at the epidermis. The epidermis, shown by Roman numeral 1, is the most superficial, thin part of the skin. Superficial means it's found at the surface. It consists of stratified squamous epithelium, layers of these flattened, protein-rich cells. The prefix epi, the roots of epidermis, means above. In this case, above the dermis, which is the thicker and deeper part of the skin. It's shown as Roman numeral 2 here on the model. The dermis is made of dense, irregular connective tissue and is heavily vascularized. We can see a lot of blood vessels which is what vascularize means, located near the superficial dermis, as well as some of the deeper parts of the dermis. Note that the epidermis is avascular, which means there's no blood vessels, an absence of vascular tissue. The hypodermis, also called the subcutaneous layer or the sub-Q layer, is shown by Roman numeral 3 here on the model. The prefix hypo means below, which is its location below the dermis. Technically, the hypodermis is not part of the skin. It stores fat and is also vascularized. It consists of adipose tissue which stores the fat, and also a network of areolar connective tissues that are found throughout the sub-Q layer, which provide a supporting framework for the fat cells and blood vessels. The layers, or strata, of the epidermis are shown here on the model. The deepest layer of the epidermis is the stratum basali. Basali means basal or base. This is shown by number 2C here on the model. It's made up of one layer of cuboidal or columnar epithelial cells called keratinocytes. This layer contains the stem cells that divide by mitosis to produce the new keratinocytes of the epidermis. Moving on up, the next layer of the epidermis is the stratum spinosum, shown as number 2B on the model. This layer is thicker. It consists of about 10 or so layers of keratinocytes that are strongly attached to each other via desmosome cell junctions. Next is the stratum granulosum, shown as number 2A on the model. It's this darker band. This layer is thinner than the spinosum, containing only about five layers of flat keratinocytes. These flat cells are dying and breaking down, releasing proteins and lipids to the superficial epidermis. It often takes on a darker color in microscope staining. Next is the stratum lucidum. This is shown as number 1A on the model. It's only found in the thick skin of the palms, the soles, and the fingertips. The word lucid means clear, but it's shown as this white band here on the model to make it more easy to see. The stratum lucidum contains several layers of flat, dead, clear keratinocytes 
that are packed with the keratin protein. It provides the extra layer of durability and support that the thick skin requires. The most superficial layer is the stratum corneum, shown as number one on the model. The prefix corn means horn-like, referring to the concentrated proteins of this layer. Keratin is the same protein found in animal horns. The stratum corneum can contain many layers, more than 50 layers in thick skin, of flat, dead keratinocytes that are heavily keratinized. The dermal papillae, labeled number three here on the model, are these nipple-shaped structures of the dermis that connect to the epidermis, binding the layers together. You can see how they interlock together with the stratum basale to form a very tight grip. They make up the superficial area of the dermis, which is called the papillary region. The shape of the papillae greatly increases the surface area so the dermis can strongly grip and interlock with the epidermis. Within the papillae are corpuscles of touch, also called Meissner corpuscles, shown as number four here on the model. These are sensory receptors at the ends of nerves that are touch sensitive. The adipose tissue of the subcutaneous layer is shown by number five here on the model. The yellow cells are lipid-filled adipocytes, or fat cells, with various blood vessels and nerves and sensory receptors found scattered within. One of these types of sensory receptors is shown by number six, the lamellated corpuscles, which look kind of like lollipops. The word lamellated means layers, referring to the layers of the capsule that surrounds the nerve ending. They're also called piscinian corpuscles and act as pressure-sensitive receptors. Other accessory structures of the dermis include the sweat glands, also called the sudoriferous glands, shown as number seven on the model. And here's a sectional view of another sudoriferous gland. These glands excrete sweat or perspiration onto the surface of the skin, as shown here, or into hair follicles. The other main accessory structures of the dermis are the hairs, also called the pili. And you can see one in longitudinal section here in number eight on the model. They're shown on the model as part of the hairy skin of the scalp in section A and the skin of the armpit here in section B. The parts of a single hair or pilus include the medulla, shown as 8A. This is the inner layer of a hair that is made up of several layers of cells that contain different amounts of pigments. The cortex, which is 8B, is the middle layer that makes up most of the shaft of the hair. The hair's shaft, number 10, is the superficial part of the hair that extends out of the skin. The cuticle, here at 8C, is the outermost layer that is made up of one layer of flat, keratinized cells. The hair follicle surrounds the root of the hair, shown as number 11, which is the part of the hair that penetrates into the dermis just like the roots of a plant penetrate the soil. The hair follicle is made up of an internal root sheath, 8D, and an external root sheath, 8E. The two sheaths together are often referred to as the epithelial root sheath. 
An interesting feature to note about the structure of the hair follicle is shown pretty clearly on the model. Take a look at the external root sheath and follow it up. You can see that it is just a continuation of the epidermis as it dips down into the dermis and forms these outer structures surrounding the hair follicle. There's another region that surrounds the hair follicle which is a very dense mass of connective tissue called the dermal root sheath and that is shown here as letter G. This is the flesh-colored layer that you can see all the way around the follicle. The dermal root sheath is also called the fibrous layer, which describes its composition of connective tissue. The enlarged, swollen region of the roots at the bottom of each hair follicle is called the bulb and it's numbered 11A on the model, which might be hard to see here on the video. Inside the bulb is the papilla of the hair. This is shown as number 12 here on the model. This is a nipple-shaped area made up of a network of blood vessels that supply nutrients to the growing hair follicle. The papilla also contains a region called the hair matrix, which isn't shown on the model, but generally it's located directly above the papilla. This is a layer of actively dividing cells that produce and grow the new hairs. The oil glands, also called sebaceous glands, are labeled number 13 on the model. These are rounded branch glands that are usually connected to the hair follicles, as we see here, and also in a sectional view here. The part of the gland that secretes the oily mixture, which is called sebum, it opens up into the hair follicle, and you can see that in this longitudinal section. Also associated with the hairs are the erector pili muscles, shown as number 14. These are bundles of smooth muscles that contract when stimulated by stress, fright, or cold temperatures. They lift the hair shaft off of the skin surface. The word erector means to raise. This creates the common goosebumps appearance to the skin. 